Hawaii was born in fire. Its islands spawned by volcanic eruptions. And in some places, the fires still burn. On the big island, the island named Hawaii, Kilauea spews forth molten rock in a daily spectacle of creation. The volcano's newest cone, Pu'u'o'o, has erupted almost continuously since it first appeared in 1983. The steady flow of lava over two decades has added more than 500 acres to the island. The landscape of Kilauea may seem alien and forbidding, but some find it irresistible. This may be the best place on the planet to observe a long-term eruption at close range. Scientists come often to the floor of Kilauea's caldera to take the pulse of the volcano. Here, the ground itself is hot and treacherous, in danger of giving way to the lava that flows beneath. Kilauea's lava can move fast, at well over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. For geologists Carl Thornburr and Tim Orr, today's mission is a daunting one, retrieving samples from a fresh batch of molten lava. Looks like we got some hot stuff up ahead. They'll quench their samples in a coffee can filled with water. Protective gear is minimal. They rely more on expertise honed by years of experience. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Well, that's a nice breakout from this tumuli. I think we should get it right at the top. Ooh, hot. Not a little hot, it's really hot. The lava is surrounded by a scorching shroud of superheated air. Jeez. I'm coming in from this side. Oh, a good sloppy one. Color and brightness are good indicators of temperature. But the heat reveals itself in other ways. Well, it's hot enough to burn the burn the hair off the top of your eyebrows. And I certainly kind of got red cheeks after that one. That was a hot one. <laughs> rip it up, rip it up. All right, all right, I got it. The temperature is about uh, 1,150 degrees centigrade. That's what? 2,100 Fahrenheit. So it's a lot hotter than you can get your kitchen oven, that's for sure. And it's hot, the air's hot. The air's over 600 degrees going into there, so you're walking into an oven. So it's hard to get good samples when, uh, but when you need them, you get them. We always get our sample, don't we, Tim? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. The composition of the lava can tell them how and where it was formed. Come on, Quint. All right, you got a time? It is uh, 1406. It can also help in forecasting changes in the eruption. Let's put the rest of that in, okay? Tiny fragments of lava Something reveal like Kilauea's deepest secrets. We try to get a sample of lava as close to the vent uh, every week, uh, as close to the vent as we can get. It allows us to 
get a feel for the long-term changes, whether the eruption's gonna stop, whether it's gonna continue. Um, so we get a, a much better handle on, on what's gonna happen next. Figuring out Kilauea's next moves isn't easy. The volcano is always changing and seemingly inexhaustible. Over the years, its flows have spread across the mountain, hardening into a variety of forms and textures. Like a river in flood, the lava moves where it will, difficult to predict or control. Since this eruption began in 1983, lava from Kilauea has rolled across the surrounding countryside. The lava's journey toward the sea was relentless and destructive. For the residents of Kalapana, this was a disaster in slow motion. They learned the hard way that wooden structures are no match for molten rock. The invasion of Kalapana claimed more than 180 homes. Eventually, the community was buried in a thick shroud of lava. When Kilauea's flow stops, its destructive power is transformed. As it cools and hardens, everything in its path is enveloped in a prison of stone. Although the Big Island reveals the most dramatic displays of volcanic power, every one of the Hawaiian Islands bears witness to a fiery past. The Hawaiian chain stretches for more than 1,500 miles through the heart of the Pacific, the most isolated archipelago on Earth. In the southwest lie six main islands and two smaller ones. Their rugged landscapes provide clues to the forces that shaped them. Time and tide, wind, water, and fire. They have sculpted Hawaii over millions of years. Jagged cliffs the remnants of extinct volcanoes rise a thousand feet above the sea. They testify to the combined power of erosion and seismic forces. Magnificent canyons were created when earthquakes twisted and split the landscape. Giant craters are evidence of past eruptions and hint at new ones to come. The most ancient volcanoes, worn down by the elements, now lie hidden beneath a carpet of green. One of Hawaii's most famous landmarks, Diamond Head, looms above the beaches of Waikiki. The site is postcard perfect, but few realize that 10,000 years ago, this too was the scene of a violent eruption, as lava fountained from these walls and spilled into the sea. Today, nearly half a million people live in its shadow. Hawaii's volcanoes did more than sculpt the landscape. They actually built the islands from scratch. 
The Hawaiian chain sits atop the Pacific plate, a shifting block of the Earth's crust. Beneath the plate lies a stationary hotspot. It produces a column of magma, creating volcanoes that gradually rise above the sea to form islands. As the plate slowly drifts northwest, each island in turn is pulled away from the hotspot, and the volcanoes are extinguished. The hotspot now sits 20 miles south of the Big Island, where it's creating a new volcano named Loihi. To see it, you have to head underwater. Keeping an eye on the young volcano, scientists like Terry Kirby journey down in a manned submersible. We never know what we're going to find in there from year to year. And this year, um, there was a little more anticipation because uh, we heard that there was some seismic activity. The slow descent to Loihi takes hours through waters that grow darker and colder. Though the mountain has grown two miles above the sea floor, its summit is 3,000 feet beneath the ocean surface. Inside a newly formed crater, the tiny submersible is dwarfed by Loihi. Like any active volcano, Loihi is inherently unstable. Seismic tremors in the interior can trigger landslides. I definitely am aware of what can happen down there. We see these gigantic boulders down in the pit. I uh, wouldn't want to be down there when one of those things came down. So we're always really tuned in to any kind of sounds, any kind of vibrations. A few species have adapted to this hostile environment managing a precarious existence. Beneath the rugged terrain, the same inferno that feeds Kilauea is constantly reshaping Loihi. Delicate pencil chimneys rise from surfaces strewn with rubble. Frequent earthquakes cause old structures to crumble, while new ones form. Uh, this is pretty amazing. This is actually part of the wall that uh, collapsed two years ago. You can see the edge of it coming up here, a very sharp ridge that used to extend uh, quite a ways further out, and all that uh, caved in and came down a couple of years ago. As part of their routine survey, they'll check the volcano's temperature. Vents in Luigi's flanks release blazing heat and dissolved gases. 60 degrees, 65 degrees. The numbers steadily climb to well over 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's amazing. I think of the ambient water is almost freezing, and there's vent water flowing out in this almost ice cold water that's 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists will continue to monitor the young volcano. More earthquakes and collapses are inevitable. Loihi will slowly rise from the ocean floor, finally breaking the surface thousands of years from now to become the next Hawaiian island. When it emerges from the sea, Loihi will be barren and lifeless, like every new volcanic island. Yet even in this severe moonscape of frozen lava, spores and seeds blown by the wind manage to take hold. Tiny trees push through cracks in the surface, reaching for the tropical sun. Wind and water quickly break down the lava into soil. In just a hundred years, the bare flow can be transformed into a garden.
Here in the relative desert of the surrounding Pacific, Hawaii's rich volcanic soil has made the islands oases of fertility. Sediments wash down to the coasts, and the island's flanks provide purchase for coral reefs, the most bountiful of all marine environments. <laughs> 